All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City. Time for some Friday night business, even though I recorded this last night. It's still Friday night business, because that's when it went out. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in, wipe your feet on the rug, throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up some Silver LA. And you may be saying, damn, Big Rich has all the flavors, gelato, blueberry, Purple Widow, Tommy Shelby. I get all the good flavors. I got B. That's how I do. Let's get right into business. www.ruckusradiomerch.com. It's open for business. You can get all your Mob Stories merch right there. And we got more merch coming soon. Thank you for everybody that's already bought something. Please help us out on our journey. Thank you very much. Let's get right into it. This next article coming out of the Daily News. And this is a big one. By the way of Larry McShane and Stephen Rex Brown, salute to you guys. And the link to the story will be in the description box. Let's get right into it. This is some crazy shit. NYC mob boss Carmine the Snake Persico was top echelon informant, papers reveal. The snake was a rat. Colombo crime family boss Carmine the Snake Persico was a top echelon informant for the feds. Shocking new court papers reveal. Adding a posthumous twist to the tale of an infamous gangster known for his ruthlessness and street smarts. I can't believe it. Carmine the Snake, a disgraciad? Let's find out. The revelation, which likely has implications for numerous Brooklyn mob cases, is contained in a government document from 1971 listing members of a top echelon informant program. Persico's name appears among those of four turncoat members of the Colombo family. Because if the other four members could be proven as a snitch, then why is his name on the list? That's my first question. Quote, I think it changes the entire dynamic of how this so-called Colombo war has been sold said attorney David Scohan, who submitted the document Wednesday in a Brooklyn federal court filing. Quote, I never wanted to disclose this document. I think it potentially puts people in danger. Unquote. Ten people died in the city's last major gang war, including an innocent teen killed at a Bay Ridge bagel store as the Colombo factions battled between 1991 and 1993. The list emerged through a Freedom of Information lawsuit that pried confidential documents from the Justice Department. Scohan represents one-time acting Colombo boss Victor Little Vic Arena, who is 87 years old, senile, and seeking compassionate release from prison. Scohan cited... Scohan cited the stunning revelation as another reason to release the octogenarian gangster serving a life sentence, alleging his racketeering conviction was the result of FBI misconduct. Quote, there is no truth to this allegation and the supporting record is worthless. Having served as Carmine's lawyer, I can attest that he was not an informant, nor did he provide information to the government. Until this day, Carmine remains a giant among men, and I was honored to represent him in the many legal battles he fought against the government, attorney Anthony DiPietro said. See, I can understand the government doing some dirty shit, you know, just to fuck the game up and put out false documents. That's That I can understand, okay? But if this document is real, then why would Carmine's lawyer say it's worthless? It's not worthless. It says something, but let's see. In the popular narrative, Arena challenged Persico's position atop the Colombo family around the early 1990s and sparked one of the bloodiest wars in mob history. But Arena has long argued that Colombo turned coat Gregory Scarpa Jr., a disgraciat, and his FBI handler, Lindley DeVicchio, set him up fermenting the war with Persico. The official boss of the Colombo family on whose side Scarpa and DeVicchio were working, Carmine Persico, was himself since decades earlier in the government's employ as a member of its top echelon informant program, wrote Scohan. Quote, this explains a great many events both directly related to Mr. Arena's case and otherwise. DeVicchio's messy relationship with mob snitches has been cited by gangsters in court since the 1990s. Scohan said that Persico's cooperation made the Colombo War more of a one-sided attack. Quote, it seemed like perhaps it was being orchestrated from the top, Scohan said. DeVicchio was even indicted by the Brooklyn District Attorney for helping Scarpa kill four people in the 1980s and 1990s, but the case fell apart and was dismissed. The feds have acknowledged that Scarpa lied and misrepresented his involvement in murders during the Colombo Civil War while also feeding them information. Disgraciado. 
Scoen said the Persico paperwork. Scoen said the Persico paperwork was such a game changer that he made an appointment with the Justice Department Inspector General and other federal agents to confirm the documents were legit. If there's documents like this, there has to be more, right? There has to be. If this is true, then it needs. To, there has to be some place where it's documented who he snitched on, what information he gave, how he changed the war. This is crazy. Scohan acknowledged that the top echelon informant document left many questions unanswered. Persico does not seem to have benefited from his cooperation. There's one thing. He died in prison in 2019 at, at the age of 85 while serving a 139-year sentence. Scohan noted that Persico's son, however, had secured a plea deal recommending a sentence of around three years in 2017, despite a judge concluding that he participated in a murder. The elder Persico took over the Colombo family after the 1971 shooting of boss Joe Colombo. He maintained control over the family despite frequent stints in prison, making millions through labor racketeering, gambling, loan sharking, and drug trafficking around New York. He was famously charged along with the heads of the other four crime families in the commission prosecution led by then Manhattan U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani. First of all, salute to the two reporters from the Daily News, Larry McShane and Stephen Rex Brown. We've read articles from them before. Great work, guys. Salute to you. And this is some great crazy crazy this is crazy because now you have to ask yourself what if he snitched what did he get out of it he died in jail that's one that's one maybe he snitched and the favors were done for people on the outside i want to see more documents first i, I got it i don't know but this is crazy shit was carmine the snake persico a rat was he a disgracia well that's what this paper says so why did he die in jail that doesn't mean anything but still it's a great argument like, comment, and share. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're smoking on and what city you're smoking in. Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we conduct business. We will talk soon. Salute.